Hi, welcome to Spotlight TV. I'm Rob Taylor, standing in for Christian Boussard this week, who went to Tibet to study with some monks. And we're here with Keith Clark, who from Satin Steel, Shag Nasty, now he's out on his own. Keith, you do all kinds of music, I know that. Yeah. What do you value in music? Um, in music, what do I value? I value um, truth, emotion, and it should empower you. It should make you feel uh, great. It should be like a drug. It should just, you put the music on and yeah, you're ready to go. It's, you know, it should really make you feel, in my opinion, invincible. And that's what got me into heavy metal because heavy metal was the music that uh, just sends shiver up your spines, your hair stands up, and you're like, wow, you know, yeah. you explode. And hey, I love that. Yeah, like I said, you were with Shag Nasty. Mm -hmm. You broke off from them to do your own thing. Yes. What you been up to since you broke off? Well, as soon as I left, I started writing songs, and um, shortly after that, uh, went into the recording studio and uh, laid down a bunch of tracks, and ten of them ended up on a CD. That I'm not sure if we're going to release it or what. I'm, what we're doing is we're trying to get a manager to pick it up first and take it national. Um, so we're I'm holding off on releasing it on a local level because of that situation. I want to see what's going to happen with that first. Because I've been through I've been through that that gamut before, you know, we moved, the, moved the band out to Hollywood before, one of the bands I was in before, and got a manager out in Hollywood and, and did that. So I know how to do that, and uh, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, I remember when you did that. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right now you don't have a band. Right. What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for people that are like-minded, people that do what they say they're going to do, show up on time, know their parts, and that's really all there is to it, you know, it, it got to be on the same page musically, you know. Okay, that sounds so. really good, there's a lot of people out there like that, but I really don't think you're looking for a trombone player. Or a oh, player that's true, that's... yes, that's true. Well, I'm looking for uh, either a guitar or bass player, if, if I get a bass player, I'll play guitar, if I get a guitar, uh, guitar player, I'll play bass, and a drummer, and a rhythm or, or a double lead guitar, you know, so we either two lead guitar players, uh, or a rhythm and a lead. How long have so, you been in music? Long time. Um, pretty much when I was 16 years old is when Satin Steel got together and we went through a few names uh, and uh, and uh, we finally we settled on Satin Steel and um, and we went far. We did a lot of good things together. So I've been doing it ever since I was about 16 years old. I remember old. we did that show Eerie Rocks. You guys yes. won constant battle of the bands one yeah. night after the other. Yeah, we were a very exciting band. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about for me. Energy, excitement, and passion, and uh, emotion. Is the Erie scene very competitive? Um, I think it's more of a brotherhood than a competition. You know, it seems uh, a very good scene. Uh, the, the people all support each other and get along for the most part. And um, and I love being in the Erie music scene. I mean, the support we have in Erie is the best that I've seen anywhere. You know, even when I was out in Hollywood, they didn't have or rockyree.com or anything like that to, to, you know, get your music out to the people. Where do you want to be next year and don't say L.A. because you already tried that? <laughs> well, what I'd like to be by next year is an A-list metal rock and roll star. Again? Again. Yes. Okay, I got one question. If you could play with any band, with any band, okay. any band anywhere, who would you play with and what would you play? Yikes. Any famous band? Yeah. Any famous band? Anybody's put out more than three albums. Wow. Oh, boy. Let me think about that. And why? Um, boy, I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about that. I never thought about that. I don't have an answer for you right now. You look like you'd fit into Poison or Rat. Yeah. Yeah. I did audition for Poison, actually, uh, when C.C. DeVille left. I sent him on audition tape, and I was coming out with my first album at that time. And it was overlapping, and I actually talked to them on the phone, and they were like, I says, this is Keith Clark, did you get my demo? He goes, oh, this is Keith Clark, and he rattles off my phone number. And I'm, I go, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so obviously they knew who I was. But anyway, uh, I w at, the, at the same time, I was more passionate about my own music and my own lyrics and my own thoughts than what I wanted to get across. So I sent them a fax, and I said, well, I withdraw from the auditions. And then I 
released my own record at that time. Do you think people relate to you spiritually? Um, spiritual level? I think so. That's the whole idea, you know, is to get people of, uh, of like mind, like spirit, to come together in an arena and go crazy together. So, so yeah. Okay, now I know this isn't on the list of questions we discussed earlier. Why did you write a song about a dead elephant? A dead elephant, okay. <laughs> I wrote a song about a dead, a dead hairy elephant. That, didn't you? A dead hairy elephant, yeah. Well, I thought it was a great story. I mean, it was like, it's like uh, one of these little conspiracy things, you know. They find this thing at the bottom of Lake Pleasant, and they take it away. Nobody knows anything about it. Years, a couple years go by, and they say, oh, by the way, this little thing on the news. We, know, we found this total... Well, we mammoth skeleton at the bottom of Lake Pleasant. I'm like, what? How could they have done that? How could they have extracted that without anybody finding out? But they did. And then they shipped it off to some down south museum. And I felt like, what the hell, you know? People should know about this. So I wrote a song about it. You know? And what's the name of that song? Mamutide, which is Latin for woolly mammoth. Okay. Or actually, any of the, the mammoth or mastodon hairy, fan, hairy elephants <laughs> is a mamutide. So that covers You Googled more. that, didn't you? I did. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Actually, I'm a Latin scholar. <laughs> I'm a Latin scholar. No, I Googled that. That's on your new CD? Yes, it is. And what, other, what else could people expect on your CD? Well, uh, variety. Uh, my last CD, none of the songs sounded the, you know, the same. And, and this CD, none of the songs sound the same. You know, each song has its own mood and its own feeling and its own... You know, when you listen to it, you don't, you don't say, Oh, wasn't that the same song from last time? You know, you don't, it's not like that. It's... Uh, so you can expect a lot of variety, but it's going to be all electric, lots of power, lots of adrenaline, lots of passion, and uh, so that's that's what you should expect. Okay, how tall are you? Uh, five foot eleven. Okay, other than people five foot ten and below, do people look up to you? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. I, I uh, you know, show show her, <laughs> show her right there. What did, what did you do when I just asked that question? Yeah, they look up to him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I can be an inspiration because, um, you know, if something's not going, you know, you're supposed to be on the same team with some people. And you're trying to go a certain direction, but this guy wants to go this way, and this guy doesn't want to go anyway. And, and eventually you got to get to the point where you say, well, it's up to me. i got to make this happen, you know. So I hope, I hope that people can be inspired, not just by that, but by everything I do. I, I wrote a letter to Paul McCartney that I... Um, that he has inspired many, many people, and, I'm, and I would like to be able to do the same thing. And of course, I asked for his help, and I never heard back from him, but that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if he ever saw it, you know how that goes. Probably so, not, you would have at least a little note from him. Yeah, yeah. As a human being, what excites you, other than your girlfriend? Um, well, music, mostly music, you know. Um, <laughs> mostly music. <laughs> Pretty much music is everything for me, you know, I, it's, it's the thing I like the most, you know, it's the thing I most, I really don't care, once in a while I'll watch football and stuff like that, and I like football, I played football for a lot of years and all that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, the thing that turns me on the most is music, so it's always music, music, music. You know? Okay, if people want to hear your song about the hairy elephant, mm -hmm. or any of your other stuff, where can they hear it? Well, the best is rockyery.com and click on our bands at the top of the banner when you get to the home page and then it'll drop down a banner and it'll say artists so click on artists and then that'll bring up a page with letters on it you just click on the letter k and i'm like the third one down on, on, under k and you have myspace and i have a myspace to myspace.com slash keith clark rocks r-o-x all small letters okay well keith thank you for being on spotlight tv thank you very much it's been a lot of fun it's been thank a you long to time since we actually sat and did an interview. Yeah. I know. We haven't done this a long time. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, you have a good night. Thank and you very much. To all the fans of Spotlight TV, enjoy. see you next time. Thanks to Christian. Thank you, Robbie. Kick it live with the CLB. Hey, yo, that be the DJ rolling with me.